to the Seattle Sucks podcast where we're watching Shrek, talking Shrek. It's just Shrek 24 hours over here. How are you doing, Greg? Well, I was working till 6 a.m. this morning, and then we just spent three hours making a two-minute clip for uh, Deadbeat Film Society's 100th episode. So I'm pretty much spent, so this is going to be great. Awesome, Greg. Well, thanks for destroying the air of spontaneity around that uh, Deadbeat Film Society clip. Uh, but yeah, so people, if you want to go to the Deadbeat Film Society 100th episode, you can hear me and Greg talking Shrek. I don't know when that, that probably won't be out for a bit, but at some point. Well, you know what? You guys can anticipate it, and then when it shows up, you'll be happy. And I know that you guys have all been wondering, what's our opinion on Shrek? What do we think it's about? What, what's the subtext? What's the meta text of Shrek? We don't get into any of that. <laughs> we mainly do donkey impersonations <laughs> and uh yeah good stuff good stuff so th- thanks to the people at debbie film society i mean not thanks from me i've never been on the show so i have nothing to thank them for but thanks from greg and our uh uh our late host colin yeah um after i feel like the last time we recorded i had just worked and i was really butthurt about it yeah but i just like worked a day and then like after that episode after that recording i had to work like two more days so you're saying you've worked three days no then no no then i worked two more days right after that in a row so three days in a row (laughs) and i was (laughs) physically dead like after like i thought i but it's like it's been so long that i didn't even remember how dead i was gonna be so I like I the first day I was like I got home and I was like okay I'll take it easy for the rest of the afternoon but then I'll probably be able to get some stuff done today and really by tomorrow I'll be back at it like so I didn't even like so, you know sometimes when I'm that burnt out is the only time I game but I was like no I'm not gonna game because I'm not really this I'll be back I don't need to like go down that hole to like soak up mm-hmm. this time of of just like yeah you're like my moral like uh just death uh yeah you're like my sims can live without me yeah and but instead no for three days i was just physically like immobile uh (laughs) and like mentally jelly and then i worked again this week i just worked the last i just worked in fucking overnight just to be avoided at all costs but (laughs) uh fortunately the cost is my life at this point so uh <clears throat> and yeah, so I'm not really all here and probably never will be again. All right. So welcome back to Sales Sucks for that relatable content from Greg. Um, so Greg, you know who else isn't working now? Police Chief Carmen Best. Oh, wow. Great segue. <laughs> it's called a segue. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm aware. Um, so, uh, you know, our favorite police chief, uh, my favorite police chief, Carmen Best, sent a letter resigning to the city council not immediately of course we could never be that lucky (laughs) but uh resigning after uh the council treated her so badly and cut her pay by six thousand dollars uh greg i think you mean from two hundred and ninety thousand dollars to two hundred and seventy six thousand dollars uh meaning it's a fourteen thousand dollar pay cut and how could anybody live in this city on a mere two hundred and seventy six thousand dollars. Honestly, a year. though, for real, in America, the pay cut is the most degrading slap in the face that could possibly exist. Like there is nothing more humiliating you can do. This is, I mean, you know, no shame or anything. This is like uh, the like dirty Sanchez of admi- <laughs> of administrative functions, like. Uh, it definitely doesn't speak well of your future with the organization. <laughs> organization, although I would think if I had, um, you know, launched chemical weapons at a bunch of civilians, uh, I'd just be happy to continue working, and not be in a you know cell somewhere. So, uh, but yeah, this apparently was too much for uh, Carmen Best. And uh, and you know, speaking of launching tear gas at civilians, I mean, she did say or justify in our conference with Jenny Durkin that uh, you know what she did wasn't that bad and didn't warrant such a response from the council because after all nobody got hurt at any of these protests. Nobody got so, hurt. Yeah. Hey look. Yeah, nobody got hurt. Look just man. fun in the streets. <laughs> look Jack. Nobody got hurt. <laughs> Which I think uh, uh, plays into our theory that this really was just about having fun 
for SPD, you know, just going out, cracking heads, firing off tear gas, and hey, nobody got hurt. I mean, some people died, but, you know, what what's the meaning well, of That's hurt? the beauty the of, of the right wing. That's why it's so attractive, is because if that's how your mind works, you can do political action that is actually fun for you. Like, if you get the chance to, you know, mobilize in the streets, it's like the greatest day of your life, not this onerous thing that you're forced to do by the miserable society that you live in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think more interesting than uh, Bast choosing to retire rather than take a, let's be serious, very mild Choosing to martyr herself. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I want to talk about is the response to Carmen Bast's retirement, right? Well, I'm waiting for... The the big thing I'm waiting for response-wise is for... I mean, I, we're not necessarily going to know uh, if she's been invited to both to speak at both uh, national conventions, but whichever one she says yes to, mm-hmm. we'll know about that. But my, I, you know, they're starting to release the schedule for the Democratic um, mm-hmm. convention, which starts on fucking Monday. Gird your fucking sanity and your loins. For, yeah. Average age of speaker, sixty-one. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that that whips. Um, yeah, I mean, this. I feel like, you know, a lot of us have been on the fence. Like, you know, can the Democrats do this in November? And I feel like we're just we're gonna get a real like emotional psychic picture of that this week. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but very easily, best could be part of that. I mean, what would the Democrats love more than to? distance themselves from the commie seattle city council and show their support for the cops by um resurrecting the martyred uh the christ-like martyred figure (laughs) of the first black uh Mm -hmm. seattle police chief um yeah she's gonna be like uh scott stapp from creed just appearing on stage like arms open like rising up from the bottom of the stage you know and uh, this is actually perfect Democrat brain, Greg, because <laughs> they will distance themselves from a city that's a reliable blue voter because fuck them. What yeah. are they going to do? And uh, go and move to the right, which is uh, the Democratic Party. But I will say, looking at the list of speakers at the DNC this year, I think best best bet is to speak at the RNC this year, which will guarantee her a speaking spot at, at the, the DNC 2024 D- DNC. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that makes sense, because here's the thing. I mean, I think for her, it's a head in the heart question. Yeah. It's like, you know she's she voted for Trump. You know she's Trump mm-hmm. all the way. But she's mm-hmm. also a savvy, like, PR person who knows she, because of her, like, coming up politically in Seattle, like, knows a thing about Dem triangulation and so you know she may have a question in her mind as to whether like her future on the like cable news circuit is more like valuable on the democratic side or on the um uh on the republican side on like fox news or something on the other hand she who knows she could uh be looking to get a point not like not not anywhere near like cabinet level but like mm-hmm. could see herself being appointed to like a commi- like a board or a commission <laughs> or you know in the uh Ob- Obama uh, in the Biden administration see what i just did there yeah. um <laughs> uh you know that's also possible too but you know i mean i guarantee she's trump ride or die in, you know in her own heart and in the privacy of the voting booth but um how funny would it be if biden gets elected gives best a spot at the doj and then carmen best is like you know uh at the center of finally getting rid of the consent decree in seattle of ending the consent decree in seattle yeah like, i mean she I, fails her way into the federal government to end the cons- end the consent decree yeah i mean like i th- i think ultimately like people are saying they're going to try and run someone will try and run her for mayor and like we've said this like wow like mm-hmm. best could you know win, you know win for mayor in this town jokingly but I, I honestly don't think that's the case um i think it's too i don't i don't think there's enough of uh you know a you can't she can't play progressive like the way yeah. jenny durkin could 
it's too it's too out there sure, yeah the words are too much like acid in her mouth she yeah. can't say them the, the, and and the record it's too after all this the record is too clear now could she be put up as a very unlikely republican candidate for governor sure could she end <laughs> up in a gu- uh uh prime the next uh, gubernatorial primary uh, running on the Trump Republican ticket, <laughs> maybe. I mean, who knows? But uh, yeah, yeah. I know, mean, I can't really. Seattle. It's just like the the mask is off with Carmen mm. Best. Now that sure, still a lot of Seattle liberals are still all for it, but those are the ones who are actually would be Republicans in any other town, and they're not enough of the voting base in this town. You need uh, some other people. So. Yeah, I, I do think the most likely situation is what you suggested at the beginning, which is she becomes a talking head on some news show, right? She ends up in the, like, Fox News or, I mean, I think even more likely MSNBC bullpen. Yeah, I it's think one so, of, too. Yeah, it's one of these people, they pay, like, three hundred grand a year to appear, like, once a week for five minutes and say, like, uh, protesters are bad, actually, and cops are good. Yeah, I, also, I think um, it's important to, like, th- that's why I think, like, she could find herself, like, heavily recruited for some crazy harebrained, like, Republican mm-hmm. run. But I don't, I think she wants to retire and is essentially, she's a cop, so... Whatever else, whatever details of her career that I don't care about or need to know, my baseline assumption mm-hmm. is that she's basically lazy. And yeah, yeah. outside of the institution of a police department that is built on that laziness and that getting ahead is about finding like less work for yourself to do, um, that she's not going to actually try and do anything in like interesting or strenuous yeah, yeah, yeah. with a career well, like all you know, cops she's gonna look just, for the easy payout yeah <laughs> yeah uh, and just you know a simple grift yeah well the other part of the response i kind of wanted to talk to you about was uh sort of encapsulated <clears throat> when the pay cut came down uh by a uh, friend of the show and uh our first patreon our second patreon to you know first was jenny dirk and then katie herzog uh, but Katie Herzog on Wait, Twitter. I'm sorry, who? <laughs> yeah, she's a former journalist, I think. Oh, journalist, Jesus Christ, a former editorial writer. But anyways, Katie Herzog uh, responded on Twitter. The first black woman to run the Seattle Police Department will now make $100,000 less than her white predecessor. So much for equity. And then she went on to uh, go th- to say that it's a little rich to pay the black woman $100,000 less than the white woman who came before her. Uh, plus, it's not going to make the department better, which is the move. This is the move the right wing has made on this is to go full like woke, woke yeah. politics. On well, this, it's just which is like, very funny. It's, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, we should be embarrassed for even bringing up Kay Herzog, but I guess was, we, I guess you can't help yourself, Brian. She and, also was not the only person who did this. I just think she was right. the first one in the fucking breach. But you know, maybe. followed by literally. I mean, that's else. her. May, maybe Brandy Cruz only actually, talent. I think beat her. Well, I think Brandy Cruz beat her to the punch. Yeah, too, yeah, no, so I think so too. By a whole day. To, uh, so <laughs> Cruz, but like, um, I mean, coming from Katie Herzog, like I, the the main thing to take away is just the laziness of that take. Like, forget the triangulation and the like. The faux woke, uh, uh, you know, care, care lording of it, but like, uh, just like, <clears throat> like, it's a diagram and like how to have a take without having taken in any information. And all this time, that person has not had any curiosity about why people are in the streets. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and, and that's, you know, I think it's different with Brandy Cruz, who has more of a, specific agenda she brandy yeah, Cruz to get knows on what, fox news <laughs> yeah she knows what side she wants her bread buttered on mm-hmm. and it you know so she, she's so desperate to get to be a national fox news you know she so brandy i'm sorry you're too weird yeah <laughs> you, you don't you're have stuck s- in local i'm yeah, sorry yeah you don't have something that you need and just watch a little fox news i, I think they have a type but i <laughs> think you're just missing it yeah but but, uh yeah uh yeah this take was just sort of all over brady cruz had it you know katie obviously had it and it was all over twitter from conservatives or whatever and one i think it shows the degree to which you know the the language of identity politics can be pretty easily like weaponized either direction and the degree to which uh as people in the street as uh good libs in seattle or whatever 
uh, you, you're gonna have to get a lot smarter, not be like a hayseed who falls for this kind of shit. Because I did see some people trying to like explain it away or whatever, as opposed to say, just telling them to fuck off, which yeah. was the appropriate. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, uh, the appropriate response to this, but you know, just a, a real charmer. Uh, the other thing that happened that was super fucking funny in response to this was some guy from the King County like board. I want to say it was. Let's see if I can find this fuck oh well whatever he cares but yeah sorry from the king county government i think they're on the board basically proposed that they should make a day in september carmen police chief carmen best day <laughs> so just pick a day in september and declare it police chief carmen best day awesome. where we Great. celebrate yeah. the police chief who made it what like two years before being basically fired for incompetence and cruelty <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know i mean just a real treat you know like in in uh, in uh, was it Philly or whatever where they put uh, Frank Rizzo's statue up there? At least he was like a party boss and essentially like a mob head in that city for decades, you know. But I like Carmen Best just did the bare minimum. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, she's a hero, martyred. Yeah, uh, she was done dirty by the demon Sawant. You know, that's all it takes for uh, a messianic martyrdom in this town. Uh, oh yeah, which by the way, hilariously led to another long line of conservatives on Twitter doing the, uh, you know, I don't know why everybody's listening to Swamp Person. Everybody hates her, and then when you'd say things like, "Well, she's the longest sitting council member," they'd be like, "Well, who cares? What does that mean?" It's like, "Well, at the very least, it doesn't mean everybody hates her." <laughs> I just like that's my new thing, though. Anytime anyone says any shit about Swamp, I'm just like elected three times. Yeah, elected three times. Yeah. So, yeah, just I mean, fucking With bitter opposition every single time. Just, just fucking astonishing. Uh, but I expect to read those takes like you know through eternity, at least until Sawan is gone. We're gonna get this take every week. Oh, you're you're expecting to go to hell <coughs> when you die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, so uh, should we uh, should we see what uh, the Seattle Times has to say? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I can't read this because the Seattle Times has gotten a lot more, uh, let's just say, touchy with reading their fucking articles. I can. But Greg and is a lifelong don't subscriber. Know why. I don't. I don't. Greg, when you give them money I can every open, year to subscribe, this just started. I can open any Seattle Times uh, page without any problem. I don't know. It shows me the ads though. It's like my my ad blockers turned off somehow, which I don't remember doing, and. It's, I don't know. Mine just pops up a message that says I have to give a public apology to David Horsey before I'm allowed Does to it really? Read. Does it pop up and maybe it says just turn off your ad blocker? No, none of that shit shows up. It just says I have to subscribe if I want to read. You sure the fine print isn't like or turn off your ad blocker? Like it's showing you an ad to subscribe? apologize to David Horsey. Okay. Um, <laughs> Danny Westneat. Uh, this is him. Police... Chief's decision to quit may have just saved Seattle from itself. Sometimes the most heroic thing you can do is fall on your sword. <laughs> <clears throat> I got if only. Um, so, um, yeah, if only she had swallowed a tear gas canister before <laughs> pulling the pin, you know? <laughs> In a noble act of suicide. Um, Police Chief Carmen Best by resigning this past week just did Seattle two huge favors. Okay, well, that's what Danny Westneat has to say. I cool. agree completely. Um, yeah, this yeah. has been Seattle Sucks. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> I'm I'm hoping that this goes into Westneat's uh, dream that Carmen Best joins him on his like bike theft squad, his like, bike theft vigilante crew, you know, and they just go around the city setting up stings, but... I feel like it's not going there. Oh, God. I had forgotten about that. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't forget anything West Neat writes. <sighs> He's my hero. God damn it. Okay. Um, Having the city's first black police chief get driven out. This is, he's also a bad writer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Well, the effort right now, again, this is like what we, we've talked about forever, it's to always obscure what actually has happened in the streets, right? This is like what the mayor does every time and all yeah. that kind of stuff, where they just won't say that people were tear gassed or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, now, it, like, leading with this is that she was driven out because she's black. 
Yeah. Right. Not 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 for like brutally beating people on fucking video every day yeah. <laughs> for months. <laughs> Supposedly in the name of furthering black equality, ironic, am I right? <laughs> was an embarrassment for our city. Okay. It, it's embarrassing that they could not act to fire her earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and but, it's interesting that Carmen Best is the, like the the er black person that has to be listened to and believed or followed or whatever. You know, the black community that is opposed to Carmen Best, of course, they don't count, right? It's not that Carmen Best is in opposition to their blackness. It's that they're in opposition to Carmen Best's blackness, right? This is the kind of, like, dichotomy that's set up here, right? Yeah, well, uh, some people matter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you go to the Seattle Times when you want to learn who. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's what city leaders needed at this moment. They needed to get embarrassed. To be chastened or humbled a bit by their own slipshod performances. Thanks to Best, it appears that at least some of them were. The other favor Best did us is that her departure spotlighted the real ideological split at Seattle at City Hall on this issue, which is: Are we trying to fix the police or tear them down? Tear them down. Tear tear them down. I mean, this is uh, this is. See, now it's just boring. It's like we're just getting into Mm -hmm. this conversation. Literally, just started. Uh, There is no information. No one has been heard from in the community. Yeah. Uh, Well, and like every dumb sort of uh, take at the Seattle Times, it begins with, "Well, everybody agrees with us." So it's very strange that the you know council or whatever is behaving in this way. And it's like. No, nobody agrees with you. Like, no, like, yeah, like people are uh, generally on the uh, maybe it should just be torn down train at this point. Yeah. I wonder if Carmen Best had a part to play in that. I guess nobody will ever know. Uh, so the other favor Best did. No, no, no. I'll get back to that second one in a minute. But first, the embarrassment. It's important to retrace a bit where the provision to slash. I, is this actually hard to read because it's so like convolutedly mm-hmm. written? Slash best salary by 40% came from as the mall as that was the moment best says when the animus felt personal (laughs) because it came from Shama Sawant. Well, and to be fair, uh, she also said the animus felt personal when people went to her house, you know, like weeks ago. Uh, So the animus has felt personal many times for sent her her personal retinue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she sent the Sawant Fedayeen over to her house. Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. That, I love the, it's it's hard to know where the proposal to cut her wage came from. It's like, no, I feel like we actually have a, a record, and it's in the, the record at City Hall where that yeah. came from. <laughs> this is crucial, as Sawant's goals are unique and aren't always aligned with the Black Lives Matter movement or others at City Hall. They're unique. Elected three times. Longest sitting council person. This is I can't wait to find out how he's going to get try and like get into some like intra movement like mm-hmm. uh to use some like intra movement wedges to like drive like a stake between uh Shama and BLM us uh, s- several council members had been understandably looking at ways to cut back salaries at the city to deal with huge revenue drops due to COVID-19 for technical and labor bargaining reasons, though, these broader plans to reduce the pay of employees across the board were do- weren't doable in a mid-year budget update. Just, I mean, seems like they were doable, but okay. Yeah. But on the morning of the budget committee vote on August 5th, Sawant put an amendment to cut the salaries of Best and her command staff. It was so new it wasn't listed on the agenda, and it hadn't been vetted much by council staff. The amount of money to be saved was at the time listed as dollar sign xx because staff hadn't even had the time to calculate it yeah it's like i mean <clears throat> as there is like yeah the idea is yeah. to tear down the police it actually yeah. doesn't matter how much we t- it's like yeah. as much as you can well that and the, the but I, you're not listening to anybody on the ground danny like, well the idea too was to have some sort of punishment or response for the people in charge of the police who are brutalizing people in the city, right? Yeah. It actually makes a ton of sense. It's the council doing what it can to try what and... What little it fucking can. Yeah, to, like, slap these people down, which all it can do is fucking cut their pay and shit. 
But yeah, it makes total sense. Again, but if you take it in this total vacuum of Carmen Best was just walking along the street one day and the council decided to cut her pay, and it's like, yeah, that would be weird. Yeah, the uh, council, I wonder if there's a backstory to this. The oh, it turns out there is. Responded to SPD's treatment of the protesters by fucking banning crowd control weapons and tear gas and they continue to use them yeah and i think it was like brandy cruz was the one who had the comment too which is like you know uh carmen best has been in the streets while the city council just like you know does legislative conferences on zoom <laughs> and everybody responded like you know the reason why her ass is on the fucking hot seat right now is because she gassed the city council in the streets right like when the she city council there. came out carmen best came out was like yeah, tear gas them. Fuck them. And it's like, maybe if she hadn't tear gassed the city council, they would have a more, you know, favorable opinion of her. But unfortunately, she treated them like she treats everybody else, which led to her being fucking, you know, on the chopping block. By the way, Danny yeah, what West... was I saying about her political savvy again? Yeah, exactly. yeah I take it all back. <laughs> Danny, I was I was legitimately shocked when she gassed them. Danny Westney, by the way, has never shed a tear or written a column about uh, you know, bus drivers being fucking laid off or any of the other number of city employees have just gotten laid off as opposed to having pay cuts or anything like that. Never seems to be concerned. The Seattle Times is always hyped to, like, cut teachers' pay and shit like that. But for some reason, for some, I just can't put my finger at the police chief's pay is sacrosanct and can never be touched or thought about or anything like that. And, you know, and it has to have all this pearl clutching around it. And it's just really strange how that works and doesn't apply to any other city job but yeah real fascinating shit this was extremely haphazard policy making it was also I, I like when you have nothing like when you have nothing like you talk about the process like this mm -hmm. like again when you're trying to like sh look at a microscope at to see as little as possible of what's going on in this story you're like mm, gosh they really hadn't uh thought through the exact numbers of this and it's like that's because no they didn't care because it didn't matter yeah yeah <laughs> like well and you know if uh westy was so concerned about all this process i guess he could take his expertise and get on the council as opposed to just sitting at the seattle times but that would require somebody having to like him maybe his ideas aren't as popular as he thinks he is it thinks they are. you cut someone's pay 40 percent you're not just disrespecting them. You're seeking to break the relationship. Well, yeah, it seems yeah. like they succeeded. Yeah, I, I think that was obviously the idea. Yeah. They, it's like, congratulations. This you, was uh, the first out the step point. to getting rid of Carmen Best. <laughs> yeah. So step one, and that it, she's gone <laughs> yeah. or will be soon. Um, not from our hearts, maybe, but <laughs> as I wrote last Sunday... Is the council trying to get rid of the city's black police chief? Yes! For fuck's sake, Danny! We all hate her. She <laughs> sucks. Yes. She literally stood there on the street in person and ordered the gassing mm. of <laughs> crowds, including uh, city council persons. Yeah, well, and she's personally responsible for the near murder of a, you know, activist who they shot in the chest with a fucking flashbang. She's personally responsible for the death of another activist in the chop when she held up the fucking ambulances so that they couldn't actually go provide aid. She's personally responsible for, you know, hyping up all these right-wing freaks so they drive their cars into people, killing another fucking activist on I-5. Like, nope. you know, yeah. what what, you know, at what point do you say that this person has to go? To be you know? fair, to be fair to Danny Westneat and his small brain, the uh, the council themselves hadn't have not necessarily done the right the politics right here of they they haven't been spending the last two months widely like ferociously condemning Carmen Best and holding her personally responsible. Most of the council members have been relatively have spoken relatively amiably and and as if they're trying to work with her or they respect her in some way which is an absurd position to take mm. uh, having any respect for Carmen Best is um, makes you a, 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 a coward and a chump and they've had a, they've had not that but a more just standoffish relationship publicly to Jenny Durkin but yeah. like if they were doing this right they'd be I mean you know uh, again Sawant so you know always is usually doing this right um yeah they'd have been saying this person is responsible for this long list of abuses and that's gonna end her tenure as police chief because the community is not gonna stand for this 
mm-hmm. incredibly long list of heinous abuses. Uh, but they haven't done that. They're, and this is ultimately like the starting this process by cutting her pay is ultimately like a very Seattle passive aggressive move. But that's the only way to get any aggression mm-hmm. out of a Seattle City Council is in this sort of circuitous route. You know, they should be out there politicking like fire and brimstone every day if they really are serious about any of this, which we know that largely they're not. So, yeah. again, it's half measures, but we can still celebrate that ultimately they did a thing and Carmen Best fucked off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, if she was this real dedicated public servant, right? Uh, how come the loss of just a, like, I mean, 277000 a year, that's a lot of money, man. And she was like, no, fuck you, that's an insult, and left, right? Yeah, uh, second highest paid executive in the city. Yeah, I mean, just um, unbelievable. Makes... You know, yeah, it's co- these people, they're incredibly well paid. It's insane. Like, yeah. Uh, the amount of Seattle teachers, by the way, who popped up on Twitter and put their pay, because somebody had found the pay, the highest, I think, 100 pay, or highest 100 paid SPD officers, which are all over 200 grand a year. Yeah. And, you know, a bunch of teachers were putting up their fucking, you know, salaries next to that and being like, yeah, I make, you know, 70000 a year and have been teaching for a decade. Uh, but I guess I don't beat people's fucking heads <laughs> with a stick, so I don't get the extra money. But, you know, I mean, it's it's fucking gross. And by the way, I mean, for Danny, for all these, you know, conservatives like Wesney, shouldn't they be mad at Carmen Bass? Like, she hasn't succeeded at anything. I mean, she didn't stop the fucking protests. She didn't stop anything from Mexico. I mean, she's been a failure by any measure. Right? That's lib brain and thinking, it, Brian. Yeah, they understand. They see through the politics. They just yeah. see straight to the actual politics of it, yeah. which is, ah, great. She can be a martyr now. It's all instrumentalized. Yep. In, yep. The fa- in the fascist mind, everything is instrumental. Yep. It, the, doesn't, it, can, it can change from one minute to the next. doesn't matter. Uh, this all her sins are washed clean by her own sacrifice on the cross. Okay, mm-hmm. which in this case just means retiring with a wealthy or very healthy pension, and uh, to her many homes that she apparently owns in the area. Uh, okay. So the ones who couldn't see it were the council members themselves, who for from their Zoom bubble soon took to apologizing, rationaling, and ultimately backtracking on most of the best pay cut. Yeah, it was really a classic Seattle council mm-hmm. move. Uh, it's shameful um, and awful, and they ended up undoing what they did before, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, the classic Seattle move of promising people to give people what they want, then doing a little grandstanding about it, and then immediately retreating from that promise, you know, the second that powerful people tell them no. The one person you didn't hear expressing any regret was Sawant. That's because she wants political bombs like this to go off. <laughs> Again, the, he's such a bad writer. Well, you would think he wouldn't want to invoke the idea of a bomb when the SPD was throwing bombs all around fucking downtown, right? You may want to go with a different metaphor. Or if you're going to invoke bombs, put it at the end of the sentence. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's not, like, I mean, just like structurally, like this guy... Yeah. I, Jesus Christ. Um, to her credit, she's transparent about this. At summer rallies, she has expressed support for completely abolishing police, to which she adds that the police paymaster, the capitalist system, must be taken down, too. Yeah, that rules. That cool. rules. <laughs> okay, all right. And Thank that you will for only out happen that when we fight Shama a revolution, rules. she urged at the Capitol Hill organized protest in June. Yes, thank you, Mr. Right. Westney, for pointing out that Shama rules at again. Least, at least Westney's, like, doing the job of, like, spreading the truth around. But um, anyway, I... You know, it is pretty funny how the Seattle Times is constantly like, uh, like pointing out the coolest things about Shama Sawant and then being like, "See, can you guys believe this?" <laughs> like, just like they haven't been around a normal person in so fucking long, <laughs> they just have no idea. <laughs> Jumping to the end here, best quitting also reinforced the core debate: what is the city trying to do here? Reform the police or tear it down? Change it or cripple it? Having a black woman leading the recruiting of more diverse force. Oh, by the way, that same black woman also threatened that she would fire that entire new class of more diverse officers, right? Well, As retribution for if the, the council forced her hand, Brian. Yeah, exactly. She was using all those recruits essentially as a terrorist threat. They're like her hostages in like a ter- terrorist situation. So I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, bl- recruiting more diverse force is a major asset if your goal is reform. Goal is not reform, mm-hmm. but sh- she's just 
another obstacle if your view of the police is as broken beyond repair. So here he actually says it. Yeah. Like he doesn't say if your uh, view of the police is you want to tear them down and not have any public safety. He actually just says if yeah. you view the police as broken beyond repair, which I, I think I think at that's this what people point, are saying. Like actually that that phrase that way, very again, moderated from what he could have said. Yeah. Is actually at this point a probably very widely held belief. I'm gonna say yeah. over fifty percent in this town. And I and again, ironically, because of Carmen Bass. Yeah. Like I, I going to the initial events here in town and then after everybody got tear gas beaten and then going to the later ones you notice a wide and radical shift amongst people that were there not because the people that are there changed you know that they weren't different people their you know minds have been changed by being fucking gassed at first they were like yeah maybe uh we just need some like reforms in the leadership and maybe some better like accountability laws then they got gassed and saw the mayor and the police chief literally just fucking lie about it on tv and every reporter in the goddamn city refused to fucking call them out on it and then the city council do nothing about it and they were like huh maybe we just need to get rid of the police you know like so the situation that carmen best and this you know mayor and everybody created is what is brought people to this fucking thing danny westy has a role in bringing people to the idea that they're broken beyond repair yeah he sums up here like uh in it with a quotation best's actions were guided at all times by loyalty to the status quo and willingness to do the role of police under capitalism defend deep inequality through ongoing repression of poor marginalized communities of color so Want said after the dust cloud <laughs> she caused had cleared yeah the fact that best is herself black didn't change that underlying reality again credit to west neat for just printing what is actually a very easy to understand yeah. good sum up of the actual yeah. position like he could be quoting some things that could be taken much more confused manner yeah. like this is very that's very clear well and i think that you know part of the reason why you're seeing these uprisings all over the country is that, yeah, people see the police department as upholding the status quo at a time when the status quo is no longer tenable. Yeah. And it's like, congratulations, Danny. You figured it out. The problem is that Danny loves the status quo because it involves a very easy job for him at the Seattle Times. Which he phones in, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> Defund the police, in, square, in scare quotes, has been gauzy as to what it really means. To how far gauzy? it would go. As in, gauzy? as if looking through gauze. I hate this man. <laughs> <laughs> to how far it would go. Okay, he's obviously not read the KC Equity Now decrim mm -hmm. like plan. What should, I, should we email him the 14-page document? Yeah. Well, now, is, thanks uh, to Best, we're yeah. all getting a little clearer picture. Oh, I guess it's a happy ending for Danny Westney. <laughs> well, Danny Westney again just ending like a crazy person. But uh, no, like with a point that gets completely lost in his bad prose. But yeah, I mean, I love the... Uh, you know, who knows what the plan is for the future? I mean, this is again been the sort of smoke screen the mayor has thrown up. It's the smoke screen that Carmen Bass has thrown up herself of, you know, they say defund SPD, but there's no plan. There's no plan. You know, defund the police. You know, no plan. It's like, no, there's actually a very long, like, detailed plan, but to acknowledge its existence would mean having to deal with it on any level, having to actually think about what it says and what it's proposing and maybe even interact with it in any way and that you know you can't do that right because your position is so obviously bad that you just have to pretend there is no alternative position out there and available but what a fucking wonderful piece from a wonderful man danny westney i think the only thing we can do now though is uh you know we were thinking locally greg but now we gotta think globally to, yeah. Am, to Amherst, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. This, this, you know, story, I don't want to go into all the details of it because hopefully you've had the misfortune of hearing about it or reading about it somewhere yeah. else. We'll put a link to an article in the in the show notes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, this, it's about, uh, yeah, there's this election going on in Massachusetts, uh, uh, this mayor uh, named Alex Morris is running for uh, Congress against a, a really shitty Democratic incumbent. 
and um, the basically he was uh, essentially um, me tooed earlier this week with, with allegations, uh, sort of, uh, rather a letter uh, drafted <laughs> by Amherst College Democrats and the local Democratic Party to saying that he had engaged in, you know, uh, sexual harassment and stuff like this without citing any actual direct allegations or like with or specific accusers. And it's now come out that with records um, of like text messages that like a year long plan by members of the Amherst College uh, young Democrats were planning like this uh, devious rat fuck where they were going to try and uh, honeypot him into, you know, presumably their hope was like getting some dick pics. Like they wanted mm-hmm. to like Anthony Weiner him or something. He's a gay man. Uh, he's relatively young. Um, he's like 31 or yeah, something. Yeah, he's like 31 year old mayor. Um, and he is on Grinder, And they, so they made accounts and tried to like get him to uh yeah like uh throw up some dick pics or something or whatever and all they got was like really pleasant conversation and then they decided (laughs) well shit we didn't get any evidence and nothing happened but we're still going to go to the uh work with the local democratic party the massachusetts democratic party and like release basically like a musky letter or a, a canuck letter yeah um that uh saying vaguely uh, blah 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 sexual harassment that just didn't happen um that it's now sort of coming out um and it's coming out that now in a subsequent report um in the intercept uh that there's records that go back with the um massachusetts democratic party yeah like going back coordinating this with them for a lot of that time too and yeah. i only bring this up like again there's you can read about this in the intercept and other people have talked about it on twitter other podcasts it it struck a chord with me because uh as i have uh mentioned in great shame previously <laughs> i was at one time a young democrat at the university of washington <laughs> uh i you know i i greg's eyes are tearing up guys yeah look I, you know i'm a ideological socialist from way back um but uh there was <laughs> you know whatever it was it did uh it that didn't seem to matter guys, man. it didn't on. seem to matter you know i scoffed actually when i first ran into the young democrats as they will uh as they will attest to but I ended up, uh, you know, needing, you know, needing a social group and, uh, uh, you know, uh, somewhere to try to get laid or something. Um, <laughs> that's not even the punchline to that joke. Uh, <laughs> and um, ended up uh, hanging out with them, joining that group, made friends in that group. You know, eventually then toward the end of my time at UW was we you know worked on we volunteered for the Obama campaign I went to several states blah 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 you know by the end of that I was like oh god um it was the it was 2009 and the early the first six months of the Obama administration were kind of like a head spinning whirlwind of horror and <laughs> I was like then it really looked more again like re- turned my initial skeptical um eye back on like the young democrats and the just every contact i'd then because of that had with the democratic party and people who were involved in it and wanted to be involved in it and in campaigns and stuff and went oh my god what a bunch of nerds and creeps and striving (laughs) like pricks uh no thank you that's it some of my good friends i you know from college i i met there because there were good people um there were cool people then at that time um in the uw young democrats it was a pretty big club at the time because again this was this time this was the end of the bush years um the horror you know stuff we've talked about like the position Mm -hmm. of like being on the left uh, like the horror of the bush years then when the primary when that primary got going you know uh in basically uh uh you know 2006 or whatever um 
he, Barack Obama was running against Hillary Clinton. Oh yeah. To to then run against George W. Bush. Greg, of course, meant to say John McCain here, but he was having a hard time thinking clearly through all his uh, tears and sad memories. All right, back to the show. So it was like th there was a scenario where you could like convince yourself like, OK, you know, this is what we got to do. But even then, so there were good there were good people. There were good, really well-meaning people in there. Um, a lot of them, even them, have now turned into like uh, Dem lanyard hacks in here and Olympia and D.C., but whatever. But there was also and the some the types who were like actual college students who were 08 like hillary stands if you can mm -hmm. imagine this there were like these strivers these like and and again a lot of people like were looking for to get into this game the politics game mm -hmm. um but it's got it's as the democratic party then sort of sh transformed over the obama years and now in the trump era i think it's gotten it's the young democrats has moved to an even and in the bernie era the young democrats have moved to even a different place like two years ago i went with my buddy max one of my good friends from young dems um who went to iowa with he he was invited because he was the president of the chapter at one point when we were there and he was invited by some current young dems to some dinner they were holding with some of their luminaries they were putting it on and like um bob ferguson was the keynote um there were a bunch and then a bunch of local electeds people from the uh the ld organizations and shit and i went along with him it was it was like a it was like a yeah it was like a dinner was speaking it was at some hall it was like at, at kane hall i think one of the meeting rooms the big like um gala rooms and before all the like main the elected spoke like three kids from the young democrats spoke and i just remember sitting there grinding my teeth into like chalk um <laughs> because they these kids in suits were getting up there going like i got to college and realized that i was a, a news nerd and i fell in love with politics so i that's why i'm a democrat and i was like oh my god kill i i was like like max had to like like restrain me from just like mm -hmm. like sensing because he's known me for a long time that i was gonna shout out loud or like tip the <laughs> table over and say something really incendiary um and like storm out um because i was just so disgusted with these twerps they all had this dem like they had got they had dem voice down and mm -hmm. they had like dem back they were like i had this a uh, minor struggle growing up and i learned that you know blah 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 and i just uh you know blah, i love politics i mean that phrase that like phrase i heard at least actually literally someone that i've said i've like said this phrase on this mm. podcast before because this is when i heard it i fell in love with politics some this this some 22 year old young lady said that on this dais up there and i was like that is that is a disease that is like yeah. if that is imagine if that is what brings you in and then think about that's, what that's worse than the chuds honestly right. like, oh 100 percent. you should you should immediately throw that person into a lake <laughs> yeah <laughs> no that. absolutely because and think about what that represents yeah. you're saying openly this is aesthetic for me this is yeah. like a cool i think this is cool i like watching the white house correspondence dinner aka nerd prom mm. on uh c-span or pretending that i do that and then think about so that you're just openly saying this is an aesthetic hobby that i'm getting in and then i'm picking the democrats because well it obviously like fits my cultural affectations mm -hmm. but then think about what that's covering for you're like it's just i'm an ambitious little shit who yep. is gonna go through the fucking motions to get into this business start work as a political hack a bit get into some congressional office as a road to actually literally running for office because the people which implies that the people we that you literally believe that the people we need representing us in a supposedly representative democracy are little shits like you who think politics is cool and then come up through the institutions of politics to then be worthy of representing us okay absolutely horrifically diseased and my thesis now with this story 
like has made me think like in the short two years this has now moved forward to an even to a new place um because basically this is this is like old school rat fucking okay yeah. this is like i mentioned the the canuck letter it's very similar to that you can look that up from the 72 primary mm. uh ed muskie like getting fucked um by some bullshit letter written to a newspaper uh, seeming to cl- slander, claiming that they heard him slander uh, French Canadians in in New Hampshire, you know, and um, and and uh, and then the wa- Watergate it, and the young Democrats. What these guys are? These were kids who, in their DMs, like said, like I'm gonna, we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna use this as an in to get an internship or like to get in with in my start in politics with this what's his name uh something neil the guy uh, who, it's richard neil richard neil right 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 richard i can't neil. say sam neil and i will never denigrate that man no. in that way <laughs> blessed blessed man um <laughs> like to get their start in politics you know to get an in so this is just i'm gonna rat fuck this man mm-hmm. but what you to just to get this in so that's so just venal and craven and awful in itself but to do this kind of thing as well you you have to like it you have to want to do it and so i what my theory now is the young dems have become what the young republicans were in the early 70s out of which you get carl rove roger stone and all these types who all All the hits were all um college republicans during this during like watergate and were like got hard-ons like when they heard about the Canuck letter and were like, oh, that's going to be me someday. Or when like they're like, oh, my God, I wish I was G. Gordon Liddy, you know. And then some of them got their wish because they started just doing this rat fucking until like the whole thing was this army of people who then in 2000, you know, both current and former young Republicans could then storm uh, fucking Florida in the, the Brooks Brothers riot, right, to mm-hmm. steal the fucking election people who just love the idea of rat fucking for their conservative cause it's a fucking fascist mentality that's yeah. very real and i i say this because this is now what the young democrats must be right because at this mm-hmm. point and this i you know i was saying this two years ago when we went to this thing it was like oh yeah if you're a, a young democrat now you're not a bernie democrat there's no mm-hmm. you, if you're a bernie democrat you're not touching the you're, you wouldn't have the tiniest interest in the these fucking dorks in ties <laughs> who would now be see when i was a young democrat fucking you know 12 fucking years ago there was this duality in the party where there didn't seem to be anywhere else to go for a lot of people on the left and you could believe if you were gullible like all of us like there could be a way into the Democratic Party and then maybe with a candidate like Barack Obama. So it attracted a bunch of people who weren't this kind of sniveling shit, Mm -hmm. you know? But now that's got to be all that's left. So then I'm imagining a culture of this then taking over completely. But what that is to me is just one more nugget of information in to uh, evince the state of transformation of the Democratic Party. Mm. from what it once was in whatever years past into uh the republican party of years past so we've we see this on all other levels and we know that the, it's like the, at the leadership level mm-hmm. has been for some time but now this transformation is so complete that that has permeated clearly down to every level of the party down even to the college democrats to the that they are now that party is just what the Republican Party was. That in the 70s, as in the mid-century, as the Republican Party was splitting between like the Rockefeller wing of Wall Street and the uh, white nationalist Goldwater wing, uh, it that split res- has now fully resulted over decades in the democratic party just becoming that rockefeller wall street wing and the republican party having shed that those people and are now just the goldwater white nationalist wing and you know we again we see that at like the upper level but now we can see like that has totally permeated everything like yeah and i mean it's just i don't know it just it just fascinates me because of my you know personal experience with it and it's uh i don't know the moment is complete you know like so many things are happening right now it's like this moment um the transformation is complete and that and this just fits I, i'm just like i'm this is all just sort of free forming in my mind in the last couple of days but like 
in the sort of way to tenuously connect this dumb fucking story to all this. But like, just we've been talking about this largely. And a lot of people have. Like in this moment, it's, everything is so up in the air. It's like the neoliberal period is ending because it has been neoliberalism has been completely incorporated. All of its projects are now done. And here we are. Yeah. So the Democratic Party has been transformed completely, top to bottom now, 100% into the Rockefeller Wall Street Republican Party. Yeah, I mean, I think... And everything else. Yeah, I mean, what we've seen, right, is the function of the Democratic Party for the last 40 years, which is the Republican Party moves to the right, right? It, it guides the country to the right, right? And then the Democratic Party follows and normalizes that Ratifies movement, it right? All. yeah. Yeah, so Bill Clinton, you know, comes after Reagan and praises Reagan and becomes a Reagan Democrat, right? Then George W. Bush comes in and he pushes it further. Then Barack Obama comes in and ratifies everything George W. Bush did. And now all of a sudden, George W. Bush is a hero to the Democratic Party again, just like Reagan became a hero to the Democratic Party. Now George W. Bush is, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I you know I keep telling people this on, on Twitter or whatever, and they always get mad at me, but it look i mean the history is the history in eight years when we have you know i don't know overlord fucking zim or whatever is our goddamn president or whatever democrats are gonna be talking about what a great president trump was and how come we couldn't go back to the trump days and you know you're gonna start hearing about trump democrats and stuff like that because the function of the democratic party is to solidify the republican party's move to the right right yeah. it's to it's to sort of build up the the sort of barricades around it to ensure that there's no backtracking and to essentially guard the le left flank and kill off the left flank and uh, that's what was happening in this in this Alex Morris case, where you have this longtime Democrat who has been in the pocket of the health you know, insurance industry and all this kind of stuff. A, you know, obviously giant speed bump to anything like Medicare for all or whatever. And so, of course, the campus Democrats are, you know, throwing their bodies in front of the tanks to protect this man against the the evil Alex Morse. Right. Who uh, just wants to talk, talk to them about how he walked in a parade one time. And uh, yeah, this is. This is the transformation, right? And um, I, I think it, it kind of goes into uh, something I've suggested on the show several times, which is that if Biden does get elected, don't expect anything to happen about Trump. Don't expect him to be perp walked or whatever dumb fantasy you have in your head. Trust me, I saw this in 2008, and all oh, the yeah. oh, Democrats were like, man, Obama's really going to show George W. Bush. We got a super majority in Congress, and they're going to perp walk those fucks and all that. And all, all the things you're saying about Trump right now were being said about George W. Bush in 2008. Yeah, probably not you. And, but. Yeah, yeah, but you know, all the things your lib friends or whatever say about George W. Bush, right? Or uh, Trump right now were being said about George W. Bush. And by the way, we're also being said about Reagan and all this kind of shit. Oh yeah. And uh, guess what? None of that shit's gonna happen. What's gonna happen is Biden and his new cop VP are going to slice the throats of anybody they see as being to the left of Attila the Hun inside the Democratic Party. It's going to be a fucking massacre. They already took some shots. I mean, small shots, but took some shots at uh, at Tlaib and uh, Ilhan Omar and, and, I, and at AOC. That shit ain't going to stop, man. Like, they're going to keep... It's just like Sawant here. They're going to keep coming. Every election, it's going to be more money. It's going to be more bullshit. It's going to be more fucking fake news stories, more fake scandals well, and all that until they fucking yeah. get rid of them. But the thing is, is they're going to start. It, it's going to be a massacre on the left because that's what the Democratic Party does. That's yeah, their well, function. But, or anyway. Now, yeah. I, I, this is this is loose, but like that is what the Democratic Party did. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I like everything. <laughs> You're saying they're no longer becoming. They've become. Yes. Which <laughs> matters. Actualized. Yes. The project is complete. But yeah. that means that indicates an ending. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Like, I really think like the postmodern period ended in 2020. Mm -hmm. OK, because it has we've totally incorporated neoliberalism. We've incorporated this. That is the complete top to bottom hegemonic status quo now. But that means that engine is dead. It can't drive anything mm -hmm. forward. It means that that those strategies may not work, may not do anything. And so you, you look, I mean, it's with everything, all the upheaval that is going on, the the the. Um, 
manifold crisis that's happening between the pandemic, the economic collapse, and the people in the street against the pigs. Like, mm-hmm. that on a very surface level is like, well, this could change everything. I mean, even we, we already saw, like, the election of Donald Trump. Like, we should throw out all of our previous assumptions. But with this all coming together, like, I think it yeah anything could happen and i think if we're thinking about the democratic party like first of all they could fucking lose but here's the other thing like there is now a split in the democratic party like there was in the mid-century in the republican party and that grew and grew and grew until that split was just the two only two american political parties um there isn't a party to the left of the democratic party for the for the bernie wing of the party to go to to transform or something like the Mm -hmm. like the sort of uh more moderate republicans did um and the new democrats in cooperation with them did to the democratic party i've been thinking about you know the electoral question lately and i i mean i'm i think i'm gonna say like do we do now right now today need to there needs to be someone launching a serious uh left political party to challenge the two main parties i think i think don't wait till it's to till it's it's only gonna be successful when it's inevitable when there is when if you can i mean what i'm saying is you just have to try because this there this is a moment like everything is up in the air the power of the democratic party to rein in and harness social movements I, i think could very possibly be dead i don't know Mm -hmm. it may not be but i i honestly think so much has changed and the people and the the modes they've used like that they've worked in to do that may be over there's a real possibility that that none of this shit matters anymore um i'm not saying uh this it's it's too late to do anything about november but I, I, I would just I would be looking for anyone to stand up and have the credibility to have other people go, yeah, okay, I guess that's the one. You know, that's the left political party. Mm-hmm. Everyone should do it. Everyone should launch left political party and um and uh <laughs> or or buy their time or like play chicken for the next uh, you know, uh month or so and see who comes out ahead and then, you know, Look, if you if you can't coalesce, then you can't coalesce. Then it, but there's nothing lost by that. I I don't, I think caution at this point is stupid. Mm-hmm. F- like we're on the edge of climate catastrophe and um, uh, collapse into into like post apocalyptic fascism of some kind. Yeah. Well, the ship is sinking, and it's too late to sit there and go. Let's see how this plays out. Yeah, don't see yeah. how this plays out. Start building something now. Who knows what it is yeah. or becomes or what who what ends up coming out on top it kind of doesn't fucking matter that's the thing with this yeah. like the least of evils fucking reality of american electoral politics like i again in this world i, I don't think i think you could ha- have a scenario where some a, a party could coalesce now you're talking about no, a real like actually having a real like serious party that could actually get people in congress you're talking about what that would mean is a party that has such legitimacy with such a large number of people and like wins such a impressive but probably still small number of seats in 2022 that existing left democrats in congress switch parties Mm. that that you know uh that's I don't know can that happen before 2024 uh i don't fucking know but there's no there's no downside at this point i don't i don't think yeah and i mean it's all up in the fucking air it's up for grabs this shit is fucking collapsing now today yeah yeah when it's thinking about how parties have been instrumentalized by the left in the past right you know the socialist party ran fucking candidates they ran candidates under the premise that this helped them grow as a party right the fact yeah. the fact that you know eugene debs was a principled person who ran for president against uh wilson on an anti-war ticket and was against world war one or whatever it doesn't matter that he only got you know 
uh, was it four million votes or whatever. The issue is is that the United States and Russia were alone as far as left parties who didn't sign up for World War One. Yeah. Right. You know, and Eugene Debs is a big part of that. Right. Uh, the Communist Party USA. Yeah. None of those. Le- none of those fucking European left parties fucking yeah. did any good after that that it yeah you know right so yeah and you know the communist party usa you know it couldn't run candidates for public election but it ran them in union elections and it installed people into political office right yeah. that's that's the thing you're not allowed to say in america or whatever but yeah like a lot of roosevelt's cabinet was installed cp usa members who essentially made the new deal good right yeah. like you know they are the reason why you like new deal programs now, and things like that but those things are good like that's good to go out and do those things and make it clear that you're doing that and also to use it to publicize left politics and things. It's not an either or. Well, right. Question. The the like, danger you know. and the fear people have in this country because of what the Democratic Party has been is that, and how our politics have been it in our in our lifetimes is that the electoral effort will sap energy and uh, just sort of awareness and understanding away from other politics. Mm-hmm. And that's obviously a poison fucking pill. Like, that's bad. But, like I said, this paradigm is shifting. There's no reason... First of all, yeah, the Democratic Party, they were always going to do that. That's how yeah. they're a bourgeois party that is was... That was their whole purpose, right? Like, but a any legitimate new third party that's going to coalesce, if it's going to do any good, will be in the streets as much as as much as it's on the ballot um you know to uh paraphrase a quote might i suggest that we come to power in america with uh a ballot in one hand and an armalite in the other (laughs) well you know what i don't think we can end any better so let's call it there uh thanks for joining us uh once again, thanks to the uh, Deadbeat Film Society for letting us review Shrek Forum. <laughs> uh, or let us give a, a short, uh, our, our own review of Shrek, Two takes I guess. for the price of one. Yeah. Um, you know, look for that in the future. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>